Hello everybody, welcome back to a very fun another video. Yes, we are still in this kitchen, renovations have not started, nor are they really in the pipelines, but one day we will have a beautiful kitchen backdrop and until that day comes, we can just sit and relish in these gorgeous cupboards. Look at me so soup hanging up, I know. So, for today's video, we're gonna be testing out all of the wild and wonderful TikTok baking and sweet treat hacks that we've seen on our timeline. Some of these I know work and I cannot wait to try them with you. And some of them I know don't work. So, let's put them to the test. I say I know, but I don't actually know because I've never tested them, but like in my head, I know they're not gonna work. But you never know until you try. The first one we're gonna do is this one right here. This is a two fall situation. Number one is we're gonna try and make the Jolly Rancher grapes, which are really simple apparently. You literally just get your little Jolly Ranchers. I had to get these from an American candy store and they were seven pounds. That is crazy. So you basically just melt some of these sweets in the microwave. We've got lime, mango, and tropical punch. I'm a tropical punch kind of lady, so let's get a few of the fruit punch unwrapped and then we're just gonna melt them. So I'll see ya once I've melted them. Wow, I might have absolutely nuked that. Interesting, kind of smells like toilet cleaner. So we have that, then we add our little popping candy. I haven't had popping candy in years, and if you know one thing about me is that I am a big kid, so um, I gotta give this a go. Why is that so fun? Popping candy, tick. Oh my gosh, popping candy is actually so underrated. And then we have our Jolly Ranchers right here, and then grape in the melted Jolly Rancher. Apparently you should stick these in a skewer, but I don't have a skewer, so we're just doing it with our fingers, but being very careful not to get the hot liquid on us. And then you just roll it in the popping candy. Kind of looks like, there's a monster that looks like that and he has a really big head, but I can't think of what the, first in Monsters vs Aliens, it's that cartoon. What is that? I don't know. So we let that cool on a piece of grease-proof paper. I'm just gonna do a few of these, get them all ready to roll, and apparently make a delicious sweet. So I'm very intrigued what this will taste like. It's not made much, has it? Last one, and then we're just gonna let those set. But we actually have something to try whilst we wait for those to set. We're gonna try this out whilst we wait for those to set. You take the melted Jolly Rancher and you dip it in a straw like that, and then apparently, if you blow it, it will make like this bubble. Crikey. That's not working. I wonder if it's not melty enough. I'm gonna re-melt the Jolly Ranch up. It's a lot more melty this time. <gasps> oh my goodness. That was exhilarating. <laughs> it's literally made full on bubbles. I was not expecting that. That was a wild ride. Okay, you know when you're a kid and they say, oh, don't play with your food. Play with your food because the amount of joy that just bought me is unmatched. Oh boy, that was fun. I'm gonna do it again. Hang on, I'm worried it's not gonna be melty now. How fun is that? I'm sorry. Genius. Genius. Yes, I have been playing with that Jolly Rancher bubble trick for about 10 minutes because it's the most fun I've had in years. And now it's time to try our little Jolly Rancher popping candy treats. Here guys. I don't think I'm gonna have a tooth after this. We got there in the end. That is delicious. That is a 10 out of 10. If you like Jolly Ranchers, popping candy and grapes. I mean, it is very, very <laughs> hard to chew. I don't feel like I need to brush my teeth after that. But that was delectable. It was sweet, it was kind of sour, it had the textural crunch. It also had the grapes, so it had the fruity zinginess. That's a 10 out of 10 for me. We're off to a flying start. And those were the two that I thought weren't gonna work. This next one is another one of the ones that I feel like is not gonna work, but we're willing to give things a go. So this apparently can turn into a marshmallow. These are peach rings. Now the thing that's mainly holding me back from thinking that this is gonna work is that maybe English peach rings are a little bit different than the ones in America, and the recipe that I originally watched was an American one. So these are little tiny peach rings. I don't love peach rings, I'm not gonna lie, but 
I really like the flavor of peach. So a peach marshmallow would be kind of good, I imagine. So what we do is we just melt our peach rings. A lot of melting of sweets today, isn't there? Pop those suckers right in there. And I'm just gonna melt these suckers. They have been in there for 30 seconds. Oh, it's very floppy. It's like, I don't know, I just was not expecting that texture. You know when if you cook chocolate in the microwave, it sometimes gets those little burny spots, and I can just imagine the cleaning up of burnt peach rings would not be a nice thing. Oh my gosh, it smells amazing. This is nearly there, and there's just a few little lumps, so I'm just going to put it in for another, I think like five seconds. I don't want to overdo it. And then we just whip it up, baby. Whip that sucker right on up. To be fair, the look of this kind of does look like marshmallow texture. And we're just gonna whisk this for like however long it takes. Apparently, you can do this with lots of different sweets, but peach rings is the one that works best. So let's see. I don't feel confident that it's gonna work and I feel like this is gonna be a real pig to clean up. Oh gosh, this is gonna be nightmare. Look at that. Okay, it has been whipping up and it does look kind of like nougat, which is obviously a bit like marshmallow. So I feel quite excited at the prospect of this. I'm in a bit of a sticky situation. <laughs> this is not cool. Kind of just feels like chewing gum. Gosh, this is an absolute nightmare. When you get it on one thing, then it won't come off the other. Okay, right. I think my spatula has just been eaten by this and I'm never getting it back. I'm going to oil it and see if that helps. No, oil does not help because then it just won't pick up the blooming marshmallow. I don't see how that's going to turn into marshmallow, personally. We're just going to let that set. I'm not even going to attempt smoothing it out. That is a battle that I don't want to fight today. But I am going to try this bit. Mmm, that's actually really good. Oh my gosh, I prefer the texture of that so much. I don't like the gamminess of the peach ring. Whereas in that, stunning. Oh, that's lovely. Next up, whoa, really dropped it. We are going to be trying the puff pastry little tarts hack. Your little tart, you. So for this one, you just need some puff pastry and a fruit of your choice. You're going to need some sugar or honey as well. But this looks really good, really simple. And I feel like could be revolutionary to a lot of people. Also, like, big up puff pastry. Just roll, honestly, the most genius invention ever. It's so good. So good. This is so simple looking. So again, I'm dubious because I think, can it really taste that good? Basically, you get your brown sugar and your apple pie spices, whatever. Whatever you feel that you like in an apple pie. I'm just going for some cinnamon. So you put your little brown sugar bed down. Now, this is when you can use any fruit. So I'm gonna try it both with apple and I'm also gonna try it with banana. So we pop our little bits of apple on there like so. And then you top it off with a bit more of the brown sugar mixture, like that. Let's do one with the good old, the banana. I feel like the banana could really be quite delicious to be honest with you. And then you simply take a little bit of puff pastry and plop it on top of whatever you've made. And basically you, you do your little fork, fork decoration around it and a little sprinkle of demerara sugar. Literally so simple. So I'll come back when I've done them all and then we'll see how they go. I'm so intrigued this is gonna work. This is what they look like and they're about to go into the oven to bake. They look good, but we got a little bit of seepage. I'm just gonna let them cool like that before I flip them. because I feel like all the apples and stuff will fall out. So looking pretty good though. Let's do the grand unveiling. I don't know whether this works or not. They're completely cool now. <gasps> wow! How good does that look? I just need to get up the excess sugar because there's quite a lot of excess sugar on that sucker. Oh my goodness! That looks so freaking good. Where's the banana one? Where's the banana one? How good does that look? It's all caramelized and gorgeous. That was literally so easy. This is so totally worth the hype. Okay, let's give it a little try. That's really good. I could have a little more some some going on in there. Like, I could have a little more flavor. It's kind of creme brulee-esque, or with a bit of ice cream. This again, a big fat 10 out of 10. I'm yet to find something. Oh, hang on, our peach rings. I feel like our peach rings will be kind of ready now. I'm not even going to attempt to cut this because um, 
I don't think it will work. But, oh, it peeled right off there. Maybe I should cut it. No, no, no. Abort. Mission abort. Mission abort. Oh, no. The knife is stuck. Oh, no. Bother. Okay, well. <laughs> we got it out. Let's try this marshmallow. Oh, oh, my goodness. The flavor is exceptional. And it it's just in, it is just like a giant long chewing gum like that's not edible <laughs> that is not a marshmallow honestly kind of like slime i went through a real phase of making slime back in lockdown i miss those days i do well anyway the peach thing is the only thing that has not worked so far we have one more recipe we're going to try but this is a fail a big old fail whale our final recipe of the day is boxed brownie but better now i've said many times my thoughts and feelings on the old betty crock i love betty crocker i don't have a problem with her i know lots of people who like baking really have it in for poor betty crocker i think she makes some wonderful delights some people just don't like baking but still want the element of like a more freshly baked product and i feel like that's what betty crocker does and you know what they taste good there are a few things that i don't love from her but the chocolate fudge cake and the brownies slap they really do i've seen many many um different versions of this of where people share the box brownie mix but better i went on the one that has the most likes so what you do go in with your good old betty crick crock instead of oil you add melted butter now some people suggested doing brown butter but i can't be bothered to do brown butter so i'm going for butter and that's still a different step someone did suggest doing two egg yolks the oven's ready to rock and roll someone suggested doing two egg yolks however i don't want to waste an egg and i feel like that wasn't in the actual recipe that i saw so we're just still going to go in with one egg but maybe i'll try that on, over on tiktok where i try it with two egg yolks then you're supposed to go in with a teaspoon of vanilla and the last step instead of using water you're supposed to use coffee and apparently this tastes fantastic and i can understand that because one of the chocolate recipes chocolate cake recipes i use i use coffee and it really does coffee really brings out the flavor of chocolate and we go with that and then i'm just gonna whisk it as normal just a few tweaks that are really hopefully gonna elevate this little supper the recipe that i saw also put it in this mini muffin tin because they said that brownies on the edge are the best part but i like brownie with a bit of goo and a bit of edge so i'm not going to put it in the muffin tin because it doesn't sit right with me okay it doesn't do not eat unbaked batter says it in writing interestingly the mixture is a little bit more it's kind of more cake like when you do it this way because the brownie mixture normally is quite um i don't know it doesn't normally look like this which is interesting into the pan it goes she's going in to get baked now do your thing sweetie I like it when it gets more of a crackly top, so I'm waiting to see if that will happen or not. Our brownie has cooled completely, and we're gonna cut it up and see if it's any better than it normally is. The texture looks great, but as I said, I'm already a bit of a Betty Crocker stan, so I don't think that there's that much that can make a box brownie that much better, but maybe I'll be eating my words. Let's see. Can you see that texture? Oh, there's a little squiggly one kind of looking good they said i wouldn't be able to taste the coffee they lied i don't like coffee i can taste the coffee quite strongly actually i prefer the normal betty crocker texture the normal betty crocker texture is a bit more gooey whereas i feel like something's happened in this to make it a little bit more cakey interesting i think i prefer normal brownie mix well i hope you have enjoyed this video what is your favorite baking hack please let me know in the comments section below if there's any hacks that you've used throughout the years that is like a, a game changer for you because there are so many hacks that are now just part of my day-to-day -day life and i can't even imagine my life without them and also there were so many good baking recipes in this so let me know your favorite and let me know any others you want to try and any videos you want to see i love you guys so much i hope you have an amazing rest of your week I love you. Peace out, buns. Bye.